Are we rolling? Okay. This time I'll call to order the regular meeting for the Ventura County Air Pollution Control Board for Tuesday, January 8th, 2008. Will you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Okay, our first item of action is the election of a chair and vice chair for the uh, APCD board for 08. Um, this time I'd like to make a short speech delineating okay. uh, my last year on the, the, uh, as chair, but nobody would be interested, so I'll forego that <laughs> privilege. You are good. <laughs> uh, is there any staff comments on this, or can we just go ahead and make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to have uh, super, uh, Kathy Long, I don't know if it's Supervisor Long on this, but Kathy Long as the... Uh, Chair. Okay, any other, any other nominees? Uh, with none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Kathy, by acclamation. Thank you. The gavel is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you, um, Mr. Sharkey, for your chairmanship leadership over this past year. Thank you. So, uh, next thing on our uh, agenda is to do vice chair. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I, I know Brian Brennan's not here, but I had a conversation with him. He said he would be uh, willing to serve if, uh, if elected, and so I'd like to nominate Brian Brennan as the uh, vice chair. Second. It's a motion and a second. Any other comments? Any other nominations? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Hearing none. Okay. Mr. Brennan is our vice chair. All right. Very good. Moving right along. Um, minutes of our meeting of t uh, October 9th and December 11th. To approve. Motion to approve. Second. And a second. An objection to the motion? Hearing none, so ordered. Public comment, consent agenda, com public and consent agenda comment. Any cards? No. Okay. Having no cards, anyone in the public? Seeing no one rushing forward. Okay. Um, next up, we have uh, board comments. Any comments from the members of the APCD board? Comments on things that have occurred over the last month? Yes, Mr. Morgan. Um, I think last time I mentioned the fact that I mean, it's a good time for air quality boards to kind of make themselves known to the public. Um, when we do, like, change the officers for the, uh, the Tri-County, one of the things that we could do, too, but uh, Mike has put together in that last letter you saw a good summary of some things we do. And I think that that might be something we will at least notify the newspaper of. Uh, let them see if they want to do an article on what what's been going on with the the, you know, the, the air quality. Uh, try it again. The Ventura County Air Quality Air con how, do you, how do you say that? Air pollution. Air pollution control board. <laughs> and see that uh, uh, see that that it may get out in our own county so they know what's going on because there's things happening that people don't really you know it's improved that much and in that article it told it talks about how much our air quality has improved over the years. People may not know that, and I think that this is a good chance for us to kind of let them know. You know, we're doing some good things to improving things. Good comments, others. I, th I think um, I certainly agree with that, and I, and I would uh, ask the question, and maybe you can answer that right away. I would think that with the skylines that's available by email, and also we receive it, you do an excellent job in capturing things we're working on and, and what actions this body has taken. Um, is that sent as a general course of business to our um, media people? Yes, it is. And okay. just to let you know, we're currently working on a press release for the 2007 smog season. It was the district's cleanest year on record, and we'll be going out with that. And we'll certainly right. be sending out a press release on the election of the chair and the vice chair. All right. Make sure you get also who the acorn, uh, the acorn, I mean, no, you go to the others, but that's a little paper that goes all over. But a lot of people read that, especially on the east side and the camera okay. and the north. Yeah, and the reporter. And They're on the list. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. Any other board comments? All righty. We'll move ahead then to, uh, there are no closed session items, so we will not have a closed session. Approval of board appointments to the Air Pollution Control Standing Committee, item number seven. Madam Chair? Yes. 
kind of always making this up as we go along here, but uh, traditionally we've had the chair and the vice chair on the standing committee, um, and uh, I think we'd have a appropriate balance if we had uh, uh, Council Member Miller and uh, um, Supervisor Parks um, join the standing committee. It's about usually about 45 minutes after this meeting, um, maybe about every other meeting. So some meetings it's not, but isn't that about right, Michael? And we actually do have a meeting today. We do. Yeah. Be available. All right. <laughs> so they try to make it really convenient by having it right after this meeting. So this is for the standing committee. You're recommending that. You're, you're suggesting right. that. Yeah, um, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to talk about, you know, I'm just talking out loud. I'm just, I, mean, I think it makes sense. Are you willing to serve? Ms. Parks? She has more free time. She just got off. She just got <laughs> off as chair of the board. That's right. <laughs> now she gets to her lunch between those meetings. <laughs> okay, it's... it's yeah, so that, anyway, that'd be my motion to have our standing committee be uh, our chair, uh, Supervisor Long, our vice chair, Councilmember Brennan, um, and then Councilmember Miller and uh, Supervisor Parks. There is a motion and a second to that. Any other comments, suggestions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No objections. Hearing none. The next item on that is to a representative of the South Central Coast Basin-wide Air Pollution Control Council. That's you. you know, may I make a pitch a little bit? Sure. We start this? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of started something up there. It's, uh, it seems to be going well. We're, we're meeting and, and getting along and, and making some constructive uh, um, ideas that will help both uh, all of our different counties. Uh, I would not mind staying on that board. I'd like to nominate you to stay on the board. Okay, great. That's great. I'm glad you're willing to serve. Okay, then motion and a second um, that uh, Mr. Morgan will continue to serve on that board to represent us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Hearing none. Thank you. That fulfills that part of it, of our assignments for the new year. And happy new year to all, by the way. Start the year out. Um, next, we have our rulemaking calendar for the year of 08. Chair Long, members of the board, I'm Mike Viegas, Air Pollution Control Officer. Health and Safety Code requires the district to publish a list of regulatory measures scheduled for adoption by your board during 2008. And this list must be published each January. District staff have developed a rule calendar to comply with this requirement. The calendar includes 30 potential rulemaking activities that are scheduled for your consideration in 2008. And, and admittedly, we've cast a wide net, and in reality, we can mm -hmm. generally move on about 10 rule actions in any one year, and that's optimistic. The rule calendar lists new and revised rules to implement the every feasible measures requirement, which are, in essence, uh, of regulatory actions to reduce air emissions in Ventura County. Two, it also includes improvements in several existing rules, and lastly, revisions mandated by state or federal requirements. State law does not require us to include the state or federal mandates, but we've tried to make the list as comprehensive as possible because this is a list that uh, the regulated community will look at to see if they're going to be impacted. Uh, staff recommends your board approve the proposed calendar, and that's all I have. I'll be happy to answer questions. So motion and a second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Objections? Hearing none. It is adopted. All right. Item 9 is approval of the proposed agricultural assistance program projects. And that is, uh, requires a six-tenths vote. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Chair Long, board members, I'm Chris Frank, supervising air quality engineer. We are recommending that you approve uh, $171,060 in agricultural assistance program funding to help pay for the replacement of 13 diesel engines with new diesel engines that run about 80% cleaner and about 10% more efficiently. This will reduce NOx emissions by 11.7 tons per year, 
hydrocarbon emissions by 1.9 tons per year, and diesel particulate matter emissions by 0.6 ton per year. And the reduced fuel consumption of the new engines would also reduce carbon dioxide emissions of greenhouse gas by 100 tons per year. Including these projects, your board will have approved a total of 72 agricultural pump engines for replacement since June of last year. We will certify that the old engines are destroyed to permanently eliminate the emissions, and your approval would include authorizing the Air Pollution Control Officer to sign the grants on your behalf and to make minor administrative changes if necessary. There are still agricultural assistance funds available to replace pump engines, and we're continuing to accept applications. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah, um, I, I certainly support these, but let me ask you a question. How many uh, pumps do we have that are powered by electricity? Do you know? There are not many. Not uh, many. The reason I ask is I notice in the Central Valley there's a solar system on a major pumping system that's powering the electricity uh, with the solar system. So maybe we need to think in, in that direction as we go forward. Okay, thank you. We, we would like to get uh, the farmers to volunteer to do that. So far, we have not been able I, to. I, real, I realize it's difficult. They can't make them. No. Mr. Bennett? Um, yes, I'd just go ahead. Mr. I, I was going to follow on to, to your uh, question, Supervisor Flynn. Uh, I'd say about 10 to 15 years ago, Southern California Edison, in trying to create emission reduction credits, did an extensive outreach effort. And they did uh, repower a substantial number of diesel engines to electric to create these emission reduction credits. But one of the limitations you run into is you need to have power nearby. And when you, you know, just agriculture, a lot of times there isn't power lines nearby. And that, and that <coughs> tends to be the big driver. It's, it's not to cost the electric motor. It, it's the cost of actually getting power to that location. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. one of the controls. Can I comment something? Um, as you know, the solar, solar energy systems have, cha are, have improved and become less costly. Uh, the reason our city hadn't gone like Thousand Oaks yet is that it was taking 15, uh, not 15, like 20 years to repay uh, a solar system on your building. But now they've knocked that down to 14 years. And so it, the improvements have been made on the cost and the and efficiency of these things. Have we ever looked at it again to see what the update is? Uh, we, we were given that by, by British Petroleum and made a presentation to the League of Cities and talked about, you know, how much more effective and, and cost were it. Cost it's something more. we can look at. Okay. And I, I know electrification also would qualify under Moyer, so. Okay. Madam Chair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, if, if I could, I, I um, note on page three you identified the total emissions reductions for the NOx, for the ROGs, and the, and the PMs. And then in your staff report, you also did CO2. But given where we are with climate change at this point in time, if we could just always have that be one of the uh, one of the standards that we uh, identify when we do it. It certainly will be our foregoing. Pro Great. Thank you. Oh. Yep. Can I ask you one? I just noticed, and maybe there's a reason, some of these, it looks like you're re uh, replacing some of these just one single pump, right? Irrigation. Yes, some are. Why, why is there a different amount we give to different people? It doesn't vary much, but three, six. It, it can be just be the size of the engine. Oh, that's all it is. Oh, okay. okay. Let me let me just say, in working with the farmers again, uh, it's easier to work with farmers here than it is in the Central Valley, <laughs> because we we have managed to put uh, uh, measure you know the amount that electricity that or or water that's used, and uh, that's unusual. So. We don't, we, we don't need to rule farmers out here in Ventura County for something unusual. Any other comments on this item? It's a pleasure to the board. Move the aye, second the item. It's a motion by Mr. Bennett, second by Mr. Flynn. Any, uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. aye. Any objections? Hearing none. Six tenths was received. Thank you so much. Thank you for the report, Mr. Frank. Next item, uh, item 10, our Ventura County Air Quality Management Plan Early Progress Report 2007. Mr. Biegas. This one's going to take a little bit of time, but 
it, it's fairly interesting and it's, it's our core business. Mm -hmm. The Federal Clean Air Act requires the district to submit an air quality management plan showing how we're going to, I don't actually don't have a slide presentation. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we're looking. <laughs> to how, how we're going to achieve the federal eight-hour ozone standard, which is a fairly stringent standard after already achieving the one-hour standard. And the guidance document for this is known as EPA's Phase Two Ozone Rule, and, and it contains the elements that are required in this plan. And we've been working diligently on this plan, I think, to give you a little uh, background. When EPA first classified us under the new, more stringent eight-hour standard, we were classified as a moderate non-attainment area with an attainment date of 2009. And everybody knew that, being how we just attained the one-hour standard in, in the 2002-2004 time frame, that we, we knew we weren't going to get there. And every, every, I think all, the, all folks in the California air quality uh, regulatory arena understood that we were going to either be serious or severe because we had been a severe uh, one-hour area for the less stringent standard. And that, that's the current, that's kind of where we are in the modeling. It basically, it, initially it looked like we were going to attain by 2012 and we were going to be serious. Then some new modeling runs were done. They said you're not going to make it out till 2017, so you're going to have to need, you're going to need the 2018 attainment date. And now it looks like we're going to make the 2012 uh, attainment deadline. And there's been a lot of uh, back and forth on that modeling, and, and we're, we're right on the fence. And, and we're going to, it looks like we're going to proceed with a serious plan. And we're working in partnership with the Air Resources Board in developing this plan. And it's unfortunately been delayed due to some unforeseen modeling uh, difficulties, and, and one of them being that we're right on, on the fence. And ARB is doing the modeling for basically all the districts other than South Coast, and their commitments to other agencies is slowing them down also. One of the many federal requirements for an air quality management plan is that we need to demonstrate that we're going to reduce reactive organic compounds and nitrogen oxides by a specific amount, 3% per year, as we move forward towards attaining the eight-hour standard. And this, prog uh, this requirement is known as reasonable further progress. And we all know that ozone is impacted by emissions in Ventura County of ROC and NOx. And we're also keenly aware, and photochemical modeling has backed us up, that we are definitely significantly impacted by emissions from the Los Angeles Basin. And one of the things that EPA did in their guidance document, the Phase Two Ozone Rule, is they recognized this and they allowed you to take credit for the actions in the South Coast District, in essence, to reduce emissions, which are going to reduce the transport into our county. Well, one of the problems that came up there is they, they, they were they, they set this policy in place in, in the Phase 2 regulation, but it was not a very rigorous policy. As a matter of fact, it, it left itself open to uh, basically gaming the system. Interestingly enough, when they did the implementation rule for the PM 2.5 standard, they put this upwind policy for reductions again in, but much more rigorous policy. And just to let you know, the California Air Agencies have we're following the more rigorous policy, and that's how we've drafted our plan, basically in compliance with the PM 2.5 rule, not the less stringent ozone rule. Well, the Natural Resources Defense Council litigated on, on EPA's Phase 2 ozone rule, and one of the major concerns they had was this upwind reduction policy. And sure enough, they prevailed in court, and EPA is now has to go back and basically promulgate a new rule following the PM 2.5 rule. But like I said, from our standpoint, it's not going to impact the way we've developed our plan. However, EPA regions have now been told by headquarters not to approve any plan at all that has any upwind reduction related to reasonable further progress. So our plan and some other agencies are now languishing. Therefore, the Air Resources Board has come up with a stopgap solution, and it's known as an early progress plan. And this early progress plan, it's a relatively simple document, but it's going to show that we continue to make progress in the interim towards reasonable further progress and the eight-hour standard. And it will also include a new motor vehicle 
emissions budget, which will allow us to continue to move forward on uh, federal transportation conformity issues, so we wouldn't be holding up any highway projects. Uh, we're working closely with the ARB and the Southern California Association of Governments on this plan. Uh, this plan does not require, the early progress plan does not re require any action by your board and, and is tentatively scheduled to go before the Air Resources Board's board either February or March of this year. Once that's in place and, and as soon as EPA gets moving, uh, completes their rulemaking action, on the upwind reductions, we'll be submitting our plan. And actually, our plan will be developed prior to, you know, it, we'll be running in concert with EPA and we're just waiting to submit it as soon as EPA can get those upwind reduction policy in place. I know people could probably be, and I am, concerned about the delays here. But there's one thing I want to assure you. Our proposed plan has four major control measures for stationary sources in the county. And we're working on those rules already. You know, the plan may not be done, but we're not going to let it hold us up. Uh, one of the control measures has already been through the workshop process and will be going to our advisory committee uh, this month. Another one is also through the uh, workshop process. It'll be going to the advisory committee tentatively in February. And a third one is just starting the workshop process. We have a uh, public consultation meeting scheduled this month also. Therefore, we're not allowing this delay in the planning process impact our work on these rules. We're moving forward to protect the public health by achieving these reductions as soon as possible. And that's all I have on this item. Hmm. Okay. Questions, Mr. Morgan? You know, it's, it's, it's good to note that I remember playing football in Camera High School and the east winds would take stuff out the ocean, come back in Ventura County, and we had oxygen masks on the sidelines. Other people saw smog hitting us. I'm glad now they're recognizing or at least looking at this and impacting our own you know, giving us credit for some of that. You know, it makes complete sense. It, it especially impacts areas such as us and Mojave Desert, where you have a smaller air agency with a small airship, such as Ventura County, Mojave Desert, next to a very large mm -hmm. air agency such as South Coast, where their transport can be quite significant. Linda? Yes, I do. And I'm wondering how that will affect the motor uh, emissions budget. Is, would it be positive or it be negative? It'll have no effect. I don't believe it's going to have any effect because for the eight hour plan, what, what they're doing is they're requiring that the phase out that transfer of reductions, in essence, prior to our serious non attainment date of 2012. So I, we're going to be okay there. That, that was, everybody knew Ventura County wanted to make the serious deadline and every, you know, and everyone at the state level would like to see us at ARB meet that 2012 deadline. So that taking credit for excess reductions from motor vehicles in the past to allow for the phase into the pesticide rule should not impact our efforts there. And it, is that phasing a temporary? Yes, it is. It, it, it phases out by 2012. Yeah, serious. The deadline's 2012. Uh, severe 2018. So you see us uh, being able to meet the 2012 even with the transfer um, sunsetting at that point. Yes, that that was our big concern. If, if they allowed a permanent transfer, we were very concerned about that issue. Yes. Yes, I kept the board in, in involved, and it's that's such a complicated issue that. Well, let me try to step back. There, there. What happened was, Department of Pesticide Regulation just dropped the ball, and they've waited so long to get their regulation in place that there was a lawsuit, and the unfortunate thing was, when you look at the amount of strawberries we had in in production in 1990. It was much less than we have now. And what happened is methyl bromide is, is kind of the pesticide that's driving our ROC emissions. And what happened was, in 1990, they wrote, we wrote a 
you know, that was the baseline. And when we did our 94 plan, DPR came in and said, we'll do a control measure to, to reduce emissions 20% below 1990. Well, what happened is we more than double our <laughs> acreage in strawberry production. So trying to, re even if you put in best available controls, you know, uh, better uh, tarping, uh, deeper injection, using smaller amounts of methyl bromide on each per acre, you can't get back to that target. And this was the dilemma that ARB was in and, and Department of Pesticide Regulation and us saying, well, let's do everything feasible, but let's realize that the increase in, in strawberry production isn't going to allow us to get down to that level with the best available control technology. Yeah, actually, the if, if you're coming forward with a report on that for us. Yeah, we, we've actually started to look at how we would do that. We, a lot of our money is earmarked, as you will, like Carl Moore, et cetera. But we do have this clean air fund monies, and we have been using those for the lawnmower buyback yeah. program. What we've done now is we're going to be halting that, using the clean air fundings for lawnmower, because we received a $50,000 grant from the Air Resources Board to take over the lawnmower and the leaf blower program so, so we can preserve those clean air fund monies. And th that was my thought is uh, as, as the interest starts to build and we get another distribution from the community foundation, I think we might be able to, to move in that direction. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Morgan? I, I agree with your approach, but I think that this is a statewide issue, not just a Ventura County issue. And many uh, different bodies are studying alternatives, alternatives to meth methyl bromide. It's not just Ventura County, the state of California. Uh, you receive reports in the newspaper every now and then about, uh, you know, they have, haven't come up with anything yet, but they're looking at this, that, and the other. And so I think they're studying it. The farming industry in the state of California is trying to find alternatives methyl bromide. I'm not sure if we spend some of our money to do that it's going to impact it any more than it's already you know, money being spent on it right now. I, I don't know. I'd like to have a report of what the state of California is doing. Farming yeah, they're, they're doing quite a bit looking That's for it. UC I'm Davis is, is kind of the yeah. lead there. I, I think what actually Supervisor Parks was looking at is, is there is one strawberry farmer in Ventura that's uh, gone away from methyl bromide and, and is trying integrated pest management and or gr trying to basically grow organic strawberries and uh, that was kind of the approach. But, but they said that they would, but it was too expensive. Uh, precisely. Where I'm looking at how exactly. we can actually get positive reductions. Well, also the if you read the articles on it, the organic strawberries are fine, but they're not the big boys. That the big ones they want to ship out and be commercially grown and so on and so forth, and they last longer. Um, so there are some problems that they face, uh, you know, economically if we start looking too much in that direction. Any other questions? Move to receive and file. There's a motion and a second to receive and file. Any objection to that? Hearing none. So ordered. Thank you for that update, Mike. Um, next up we have uh, item 11, which is a fiscal year budget adjustment. Yes, currently the district receives and manages pass-through grants such as the Carl Moyer Agricultural Assistance School Bus Replacement and School Bus Retrofit programs along with the Clean Air Fund. These various pass-through grants are in the district's operating budget but do not financially affect the district's operation. However, including the pass-through grants in the operating budget presents an accounting dilemma when we need to determine the year in operating results of the district. In addition, the this inclusion also affects presentation of the district's budget since it does not present a clear picture of our operating revenue mm -hmm. and appropriations. The budget dilemma results from the fact that it is very difficult to estimate the amount of rollover pass-through encumbrances we're going to have at the end of each fiscal year. 
And this is complicated by the fact that we award new contracts when we award new contracts late in the fiscal year. As you're aware, we have an early budget process. I mean, we're going to be going to your standing committee with a proposed budget in March of this year. We go out to public notice uh, the first week in May, and, and the budget's locked in. And as you're aware, sometimes we come to your board in May, and we in basically set up contracts for a million dollars to replace school buses. And it's difficult for us to always get a handle on how how much is going to be carried forward. This is also further complicated by the fact that there are delays in some projects where we don't pay out the money that we thought we're going to in the fiscal year. Let's say with a marine vessel repower, those type of projects can take significant time and they can run into difficulties. The proposed budget adjustments in this board letter are accounting transactions that the Auditor Controller's Office will execute to remove the appropriations and revenue associated with our pass-through grants in the district's budget and transfer them into a newly established special revenue fund. Although, I want to point, although the entry indicates an increase in our unreserved fund balance, this is an accounting exercise and will not affect the district's fund balance since it's merely a classification change. It was, it's just being moved from reserved to unreserved. And I'm, I'm going to give you a little background here. What happens is, let's say we have some projects that are delayed and, and we find out we have more encumbrances carrying, being carried forward. We haven't been able to pay the money out in the current fiscal year and they're going to be brought into the next fiscal year. Even though there's money in the Carl Moyer trust account waiting for us in our trust account, what we do in, instead in order to balance the budget you know, from an accounting standpoint, is money is moved from the district's reserve, unreserved fund balance category to the reserved fund balance category. At the end of the year, or as soon as we pay out the grant, that transaction is reversed. So the fund balance is actually never affected. It's just an accounting transaction. But like I said, it, it clouds uh, anyone's ability to look at our budget and see what's going on from an operating standpoint. And when you really look at the fact that here you have a district with an $8 million operating budget, when you look at the board letter, we're carrying forward $4.3 million in encumbrances and revenue. And it's, it's just, it's a very large amount compared to our operating budget. I guess the positive is, is we have very effective pass-through grants and we're being able to achieve a lot of emission reductions. And that's all I have. I'll do my best to answer questions. Okay. We have a request to speak from the auditor. Thank you, Chair Long. Um, I fully concur with this proposal. It will make it a lot easier and a, a cleaner bu budget presentation. The lopsidedness you're seeing with the uh, fund balance entry is a matter of recognizing total appropriations, but the revenue isn't always recognized because it's not earned yet. So by doing this, we will balance that entry. Um, the timing uh, has been the issue as far as the incumbents is rolling over. The one request I have is a correction to show it as a budgetary fund balance and use the term estimated revenue instead of revenues and use the term appropriation instead of expenses for the proper budgetary language. That's merely terminology cosmetic. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? That works. It works for you. Okay. Okay, pleasure of the board. Move the recommended action. Yes. As modified. Yes. Motion and a second as modified. All in agreement? Aye. Any objections? Hearing none? So ordered. Thank you. Now, we are, are slated to meet uh, standing committee yes. next, and as a board, we will not be meeting until February 12th. That's correct. Here. And, and that is. That's really, I was, I'm not able to cancel that meeting yet. I'm really being driven by the, VA, the Ventura Employee Association negotiations because we have engineers on staff. So okay. depending on how that goes, we'll meet in February or not. Okay. We'll hold that, and it's much easier to cancel than add. All right, then. We are adjourned with this up to those who are part of the standing committee upstairs, and then we'll. And they provide lunch for you too, Paul. That's yeah. Paul, they, they have lunch for you up there too, so it's a great ticket. Right?